Hello, people. Still your man, Dr. C.Y., the running dog, and thanks for tuning in. Today is another episode of Budget Shoe Worth Buying, and what I have with me today is the Puma Scent Pro. I got this from Puma Saudi for 280 Saudi real. That's approximately 75 US dollars. By the time it comes here in Saudi Arabia with all the import duties and taxes and everything, the prices usually go up. So those in the U.S. might even get this at 50 or less. So it does fall in the category of affordable budget shoes. I tested it and I think it's worth looking into. That is why I'm sharing it here today in my series, Budget Shoes That Are Worth Buying. You can check out the playlist. I have other budget shoes also, which I've reviewed. Those that I think that are worth buying, I put them up out here in my channel so that those who are interested can also look them up and also benefit. I've done a few runs in this and I'm here to share my thoughts on these shoes. Thanks guys for tuning in. Once again, if you are not subscribed yet to the channel, I must ask you once again to please click that subscribe button. You know, clicking the subscribe button helps the channel to grow. That's why we keep asking you to please subscribe. And also, if you like the contents of this video, do not hesitate to also click the like button so that the YouTube algorithm can show this video to more people. So let's get to the details of the shoe. If you just take a general look at the shoes, you see that these shoes are nicely designed and they really do look lovely. The color play, the design of these shoes are just pretty nice. If you take a general look at this, you see that these actually do look nice. And the one good thing is that these shoes, despite the fact that these are budget shoes, but they don't look cheap at all. The materials of this shoe are pretty nice and also they look at the finishing. The finishing is just top notch, you see. Everything looks so clean. So that's a very big plus for these shoes. First of all, starting with the upper, you see that the whole of this upper is a one-piece material, not much stitches around, a kind of textile mesh. It's thick and tough and minimally stretchy with lots of holes for breathability. Around the heel counter and collar, you see lots of padding. This is complemented also by the thick pattern on the tongue. So the overall, you are going to get a very nice ankle support and comfort. Together with the gusset here for a nice and secure lockdown. One other thing too, lots of overlays, kind of reinforcements. You know, areas they think that are susceptible to high abrasion, they put these things to strengthen them. And if you look also, the toe box width looks pretty decent. If you touch it, there's a kind of firm TPU material in the heel to also add stability. I've done some running in these shoes actually and they are pretty breathable. Now let's look at the sole. The mid sole of these shoes it consists of this pro foam material. It is firmer than the nitro foam but it still got some give to cushion the ride and also add some nice spot to these shoes. Now the sole is pretty flexible. One other good thing is that this has a very thick insole. I think a lot of the comfort you get from these shoes come from this insole. To the outsole now, you see it's covered almost with thick rubber, similar design to the Forever Run Nitro, and also can do well on very light rails. Of course, it's got some exposed foam here in the middle, but the high abrasion areas in the heel and in the forefoot are nicely covered with rubber. And the thickness of this rubber is also pretty cool. This rubber is what Puma calls the Pro Tread. I think this is the first shoe that I'm seeing that has this Pro Tread. Then we see how it does in the long run. Nice toe roll here also in the front here. So if you want to use this for the gym and some other exercises, it's protected. The less length in this is just optimal. Even when you want to you tie the runners, it's just enough, you know, it's not too much hanging out and also not too short. So, so how did this perform on the road? First of all, I couldn't get the exact stack height of this from the Puma website. And I didn't want to also go into unofficial channels, you know, because so many people put up different measurements. So that's why I didn't even bother. However, what I did is what I usually do. I compare the known to the unknown. I put this on one foot and also put the Takumi on the other side. And these were slightly higher. So I will put the stack height of this to around maybe 35 millimeters. And from the Puma website, we got that this has a 10 millimeter heat to toe drop. I put these shoes to work, you know, out of the box, I did a 10K in these shoes and it was a pretty comfortable run. Now, these are firmer than the Nitro foam, but they were also compressive and we were able to give a decent cushion. And another important thing is that they were very decently responsive. Another thing too that is worth noting is that these shoes also have wide base, both in the forefoot and the heel area. And together with the relative firmness of this midsole, these shoes were pretty stable. So the cushioning was pretty decent. The response was okay. 
Another thing too is that the outsole was nicely grippy on the road. I took my corners with confidence. The traction on this were pretty okay. I can't talk about the durability of this Pro Tread rubber, but the thickness is pretty decent. The insole is so thick and soft and cushy, so it does a lot to improve the underfoot feel. These shoes were pretty comfortable. The toe box width was very nice and the shoes were very breathable. But it had a couple of misgivings. Number one is that there's some kind of thing they added here to stiffen this place, like a toe guard. They were a little firm. Anytime my toes touched it, they were not very comfortable. However, the good thing is that the toe box width is good and the sizing is very nice, true to size. So I had quite a lot of space here. So my toes weren't actually touching it. But I noticed that anytime, for any reason, I slipped up to it and my toes rub on it, they did feel a little uncomfortable. Now, another thing also which I wanted to mention is that these shoes are heavy. They weigh 342 grams in men's size US 11. It's on the heavy side. That's the same weight as the Adidas Adista in the range of the Ultra Boost Lite, you know. They didn't actually feel heavy in the run because out of the box, I did a non-stop 10K at 532 per kilometer. That's about the same rate I do in even the light shoes. So I wouldn't really say that they were a big minus on the road. And my feet didn't fatigue that much also. The arch support is not the best from Puma, but it's pretty decent. It's, it's okay. The transitions from landing to toe off was pretty smooth. So the ride you get from this is a nice, comfortable and bouncy ride. This will give you the softest ride. It also doesn't give a firm ride. It just ride there in the middle, you know. And for their price, at 75 US dollars, I think this is a deal that is worth looking into. If you want something that doesn't cost that much, but still able to do the job for you, I think these shoes here can come in handy. And then another thing, if you look at it also, it's got a wide base, got a decent bounce, nice lockdown, comfortable feel. This would be a very nice shoe for the gym. Even if you just want to buy this and wear this as casual wear, this would also make a very decent casual shoe. So guys, that's it about this episode of budget shoes that are worth buying. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more videos and see you in the next one.